This week on Crunch Week, we're talking about Yahoo's $1.1 billion acquisition of Tumblr, Lyft's big raise, and the Xbox One launch. Hi, welcome to Crunch Week. I'm Lena Rao. I'm Ryan Lawler. And I'm Greg Comparic. And first up, we're going to be talking about Yahoo's big acquisition, $1.1 billion for Tumblr um, this past Monday. Uh, what are your initial thoughts? Well, I, I think what's interesting is that it's a big acquisition. You know, Yahoo spent the last like several weeks, you know, just gobbling up little startups, um, you know, making a bunch of aqua hires. I think they had gotten something like six startups in the period of two weeks. And then suddenly there was like Tumblr, you know, this right. $1 billion acquisition. So I found that interesting. What'd you, know. you think, Greg? Um, pretty much the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> It was interesting to see them. A lot of the acquisitions they made recently, people were starting to wonder if these were companies that like really just needed that last second acquisition. Right. Maybe they couldn't raise a Series A. Maybe you know they were starting to flounder. But Tumblr, I definitely don't feel like that was the case for them. Yeah, I mean, there, there had been some other rumors around that like they were having trouble creating revenue. Um, you know, the whole sort of idea now is that uh, I guess they could put advertising, use some of Yahoo's bread and butter when it comes to advertising and start monetizing a little bit more off the site. Um, it sounds like there are plans for that, so. I don't know, is that gonna screw up Tumblr? I, I, yeah. What was interesting, you know, is that Tumblr, like David Karp has been so against advertising for so long and they kind of just like added it reluctantly. Um, so I don't know how that fits with Yahoo's big ad plans or what they're gonna do around that. I assume that's gonna be part of their goal because if you look at Yahoo, like even over the past 10 years, they're still one of the, the top 10 traffic sites on the web. And uh, I assume that that's largely because of older folks who still have it bookmarked as their homepage from you know, the late 90s or early 2000s. So that kind of has their market set in like this older audience. But by buying Tumblr, they buy this much younger audience. I mean, you gotta assume that they're between, most users on Tumblr between maybe 18 and, and 30. So it kind of shifts Yahoo's marketing demographic drastically. Right, right totally. Um, it, it's the other thing I thought was interesting was, you know, when you talk about things that Yahoo's acquired, like there's this long list of things that Yahoo has screwed totally. up. You know, yeah. uh, Flickr. Flickr. Well, I, well, I guess you know they're trying to revive it, but you know, yeah. I, I think a lot of people would argue that Flickr didn't, you know, it didn't necessarily grow right. under the Yahoo the way that uh, everyone yeah. expected it to. And the question is, you know, is Yahoo still this big bureaucratic mess that's going to drag down innovation at something like Tumblr? or will Marissa have that under control? I mean, all signs point, it's, it's hard to predict whether she will. I mean, if, if there is someone that's gonna be able to home grow, you know, a, an already established brand and um, property, I think she is the one. I mean, she's had a proven success rate at Google and, um, you know, hopefully she'll be able to turn around Yahoo. It's unclear like what the strategy is and what they are yet. I mean, right. like Tumblr doesn't necessarily, you don't think of Yahoo and think of Tumblr, like they certainly are, are separate. But then again, would you think of Google and YouTube? I don't know. I mean, you know, right. that was a huge acquisition and certainly a big one for, yeah. um, a game changing one for Google. So maybe Marissa just has this vision in her head of the way that it's gonna happen for, for Yahoo and the strategy. and. Tumblr is a big piece of that. It's unclear, though, yet. I mean, what it what it really means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and and the thing is, it's interesting. Is like, you thought, you know, 1.1 billion. That's a lot of money. But like, it seems like Yahoo's still kind of vying for other companies out there. there the news broke as well this week that um, they're now in the in the mix to buy Hulu. So yeah, they're one know. of they're one of I think seven companies that have made a bid. So. You know, I mean, they're interested. Um, it's not really clear what any of those bids are yeah, or I mean, how committed they are so to it. So, Ryan, you're sort of the expert on, on this Hulu stuff. I mean, do you think, what is the, the general, like, value of Hulu? I mean, what are they saying that... that I mean, it's tough to say, you know. Um, Hulu is a really beautiful website that houses a lot of other people's content. And without really, really it'll come down to the rights around that content. Without, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. dedicated rights for a long period of time, um, I'm not sure how much value there actually is in Hulu. Um, and there have been a lot of recent 
you know, executive departures. Um, Jason Kilar, who is their long-running mm -hmm. CEO, he left not too long ago. He took their CTO, one of their senior product guys, just joined Sidecar recently. So, I mean, there's already been a lot of departures um, from a personnel standpoint. Um, so that's an issue. Um, questions around rights and, you know, it's just kind of like, what are you actually buying? Right. Well, stay tuned, I guess, for that story. Um, I want to switch gears to uh, Lyft. Yeah. Big raise for ride sharing this week. Um, 60 million from Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, and, you know, a, a pretty aggressive move by Lyft to raise so much money. I mean, they're only a year old, right? So. Yeah, well, so so the interesting thing about that is that Zimride, which was sort of the parent corporation, I right. guess, they recently just, um, they recently just uh, became Lyft Inc. You know, they um, um, are taking over that brand and they still have the Zimride assets and all that. But um, yeah, Lyft as a service has only been around for one year, like almost to the day that they've raised this funding. It's a huge amount of funding. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm i curious, it's, it's, it's sort of an interesting, um, uh, contrast to Uber, you know, who act also has added ride sharing now mm -hmm. to their uh, offerings. But, you know, Uber's taking this sort of gradual um, raising of money, you know, sort of every year, every every little under that, and uh, and has gradually grown, whereas Lyft has just been like a rocket ship um, up. And, and ride sharing definitely has had its like regulatory hurdles as well. So, you know, I mean, what do, you, what do you guys think about that? I actually don't use Lyft, but I've used Uber's um, ride sharing, and, and so far I actually like right. it. I haven't right. had any issues. Do you use Lyft, Greg? I've used it a couple times. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, what are your thoughts? Like, just getting into a car with a regular dude? Um, I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I know more <laughs> about my. I feel like I know more about my Lyft driver than I do a taxi driver. Right. Yeah. Um, it's much easier if something goes wrong with the driver. It's much much easier to get out of. A lift and be like, flag, 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 bad, right, right, bad right, things, right. and it is to like get their medallion number and and make a big deal about it. Right, so, right. Um, make a call to some number where you don't even know, you know, where that right. feedback goes. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're the ride sharing guru. What's right. your, who do you, do you use everyone? I I try to mix it up. You know, I I'll be honest. Like Lyft is my is my go to. It is like okay. it's the first app that I open. Um, and then, you know, if there aren't any drivers available, I'll check out Uber or I'll check out Sidecar or maybe one of the cab apps. Um, but generally, you know, for me, it's like it's that number one app. Um, the thing is, for a while in San Francisco, at least, they were having problems keeping up with demand. Mm -hmm. Like they just didn't have enough supply of, of drivers. And it seems like up from an operational standpoint, they've gotten much better about that. So um, so that's good news for them. I mean, this funding is a huge sort of uh, validation, shot in the arm for them. The fact that it was in Dries and Horowitz, you know, which is uh, Scott Weiss led the round and, right. and we'll be you on know, their board, right? and That's will be right. on their board. And Andreessen is all about, you know, helping companies scale and with their operations mm -hmm. and, you know, expanding very quickly. So it'll be interesting to see how that moves forward. Yeah, so Greg, you took a trip up this week to Seattle yep. uh, for to Seattle. the Xbox One launch. Tell us about uh, your initial thoughts. Big gaming console news. Yeah, I'm actually really excited. Um, yeah. It's gotten a lot of flack because it's, it's A, there's, they didn't bring a lot of brand new, crazy, innovative stuff right off the bat, and B, they're kind of trying to address a new market, which is people who just want to watch TV and use it as kind of the hub of their living room. So the, the most vocal group, the hardcore gaming group, is like, boo, this is nonsense. We're never going to buy this. They're totally going to buy it. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited about it. Uh, I only got a little bit of hands-on time with it and mostly just in kind of like segmented pieces. They're like, here, play with the controller, play with the new Kinect. Uh, but the new controller is amazing. Uh, okay. I don't know if you guys have ever used the Xbox controller, but mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of it. I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with this new controller. But the, uh, the big new things about this console, it, it, it's got a whole new, new design. kind of looks like a TiVo. It's kind of gigantic, but they're trying to make it fit in, into the living room more. Uh, it's got a uh, Blu-ray player built in for the first time. Uh, that's something that the, the, the old PlayStation kind of had over the Xbox for a long time because Microsoft made the silly decision to go with HD DVDs. Uh, but overall, it looks like it's going to be a pretty great, great gaming console. 
Oh, and it comes with a new Kinect, which actually seems to work unlike the current Kinect, okay. which, oh. which never oh. works right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the other th interesting thing, like ooh, talking about the, the demo, because I watched the live stream a little yeah. bit, um, the entire control was done by voice. Like, yeah. is that going to be creepy? Are people really going to <laughs> want to talk to their TV? One of my favorite things about that is, uh, so Xbox had that, that, that show streaming to people's Xboxes at home, and as they were giving out commands during the presentation, it was messing with people's uh, Xboxes back at home. Oh, no. Because during the presentation, they'd be like, That's Xbox, awesome. pause, and it would pause their stream. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> um, but it's a little bit creepy. One of the things is that you can turn on the Xbox when it's off, which means that technically the Xbox is kind of uh, always listening to you, which is pretty creepy. But I'm pretty sure that if that feature creeps you out, you can turn it off. So right, right. So you 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 think it's going to be a big a big win for Microsoft then? Um, I wouldn't predict that it'd be a huge win. I have I don't foresee it being a a, a failure. You know, okay. when the when Nintendo launched the Wii U. There was nothing to, like, going from, like, the Wii to the Wii U, right? The Wii had this thing that just drove sales, and it was, it was so obvious why people would buy it. But with the Wii U, there was no real sales pitch. Uh, but moving from Xbox 360 to Xbox One, I, I imagine the, the same people that bought the Xbox 360 are going to buy the Xbox One. So I think it'll do that just as well as the 360. Awesome. Well, that is all the time we have for this week. But join us next week. Thanks. <laughs>